Penguins! Everyone loves a penguin. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the masters of surviving life in the extreme cold. Some species of penguin can survive conditions that drop to minus 60 degrees Celsius, which I think is minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit, something along those lines. Basically, it's really cold. Now, I always think at first glance, it doesn't really look like penguins have got much of a winter coat on, especially when you're comparing them to things like this and that and this but they are of course really well adapted to surviving life in the extreme cold. Firstly, they have multiple layers and this includes multiple layers of feathers which they use to keep them waterproof and also for insulation. And they also have a really thick layer of fat underneath their skin. Now I should say that when we think of penguins, we're probably all picturing scenes of blizzards and cold weather and freezing temperatures, but actually some penguins do live in warmer climates. And here I'm thinking particularly of the Galapagos penguin, which as the name suggests, lives in the Galapagos Islands. So they are nice and cozy up there in the tropics. Yeah, these guys got the right idea. Now in contrast to that, we have the emperor penguin, which is probably one of the birds that can survive the most extreme weather conditions. Out of the 18 different species of penguin, the emperor penguin and the Adelie penguin both live and breed in Antarctica. And even by penguin standards, that makes them pretty hardy that they can survive these extreme conditions all year round. But emperor penguins are really well adapted for this as they have proportionally smaller flippers and beaks compared to other penguins, which helps to reduce heat loss. Their feet also contain special fats, which prevent them from freezing over as they're in contact with the ice for so long. But you really get to see just how impressive emperor penguins are when it comes to the breeding season. They breed around March, April time with a single egg laid around May, June. Incubation lasts for around two months with the chick hatching in August, which is the beginning of the springtime in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is a time when the chicks do have the greatest chance of survival. But this does mean that the adults have the really challenging job of having to incubate the egg throughout that really harsh winter. And this is usually done mainly by the males as after laying the egg, the females then go out to sea to feed and refuel. And the conditions can be extreme to say the least. They're usually surviving in blizzards that can go up to 200 kilometers an hour. It's almost constant darkness, freezing temperatures down to minus 30 degrees Celsius, sometimes even dropping to minus 60. So by human standards, it's pretty amazing that they can survive this. So the males do have quite a job trying to keep that really fragile egg nice and warm so it survives this winter. And they do it by balancing the egg on top of their feet so that the egg's not touching the ice because that would be really bad. And similar to other species of penguin, such as the king penguin, they also have this feathered skin, which is known as a brood pouch. And that goes over the egg to keep it nice and warm. But the emperor penguin's true weapon is what's known as the huddle. And this is when emperor penguins will stand really close together, heads bent down, and this sort of group incubation really helps them to survive those really harsh conditions. The penguins on the outside of the huddle are getting the full force of the wind and the cold, so they always try and move into the centre of this huddle. But with so many penguins grouped together, the centre of this huddle can actually reach temperatures above 37 degrees, which means that this is a lot warmer than most of those penguins are used to. So they're actually trying to move away from the centre. And as a result, the huddle is constantly moving round as penguins on the outside, which are really cold, move inwards, and penguins that are getting a bit too warm on the inside are moving outwards. Once the females return around the beginning of spring and hopefully the egg hatches, the adults will then continue to incubate that little chick until it grows big enough. And eventually those little penguin chicks will form little huddles of their own to keep warm. Yeah, that's adorable. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button below the video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more wildlife videos. And don't forget, you can also follow Wildlife Channel on all of my social medias. I'll put links to these in the description box below. So do go and check those out. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you very soon in a new video. Bye guys. Bye.